Colon cancer is no longer just an older adult's disease. In recent years, we've seen a disturbing trend. More and more cases of colorectal cancer are being diagnosed in adults under 50. And while part of the explanation is improved screening, that's not the whole story. When it comes to colon cancer, there are some major lifestyle factors we can and should take control of. In this video, I'll walk you through six of the biggest contributors to colon cancer that you can actually influence and share one extremely powerful tool for prevention that almost no one talks about. In fact, fewer than 10% of Americans get enough of it. So stay with me to the very end because that final tip may be the easiest, most impactful change you can make. It used to be that colon cancer was almost always diagnosed in people in their 60s or 70s. That's why colonoscopies traditionally started at 50. But now we're seeing a shift. People in their 40s, 30s, and even 20s are being diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And often, it's not caught early. Why is this happening? Well, yes, genetics still matter. About 5 to 10% of colorectal cancers are linked to inherited syndromes, like Lynch syndrome. But for most people, we're talking about sporadic colon cancer, meaning it's driven by environmental environmental and lifestyle factors. That includes what we eat, how we move, how well we sleep, the long-term effects of low-grade inflammation, and insulin resistance. So let's talk about six specific areas that matter. More than a diabetes risk, one of the clearest links we now understand is between excess sugar intake and the growth of certain cancers, including colorectal cancer. Why? Because cancer cells are metabolically active. They thrive on glucose and rely on metabolic pathways that respond strongly to insulin and insulin-like growth factor 1 or IGF-1. High sugar diets, particularly those high in high fructose corn syrup, stimulate insulin release and elevate IGF-1. That can promote cell proliferation and reduce apoptosis, which is the body's natural way of clearing out abnormal cells. A large study published in Cancer, Epidemiology, Biomarkers, and Prevention showed that men with higher levels of circulating IGF had a significantly increased risk of colon cancer, and women were not far behind. So here's what I recommend. Keep added sugars under 25 grams per day, avoid sugar, sweetened beverages, and desserts with HFCS, or excessive fructose. Read food labels carefully because sugar hides under names like dextrose, maltose, and corn syrup solids. Let's talk about refined carbohydrates, things like white bread, crackers, cookies, and breakfast cereals. These products are often made from ultra-processed flour, stripped of natural fiber, vitamins, and minerals. What's left is mostly starch, which rapidly breaks down into glucose. But not all starch is created equally. Processed grains are higher in amylopectin, a fast-digesting starch that causes sharp insulin spikes. Whole grains and legumes, on the other hand, contain more amylose, which digests more slowly and causes gentler insulin response. Here's the problem. High insulin levels over time contribute to insulin resistance, and studies have shown that people with type 2 diabetes or prediabetes have a significantly higher risk of colon cancer. So here's what you can do. Swap white rice for long grain brown rice or wild rice. Choose whole rolled oats over instant oatmeal. Add more legumes like lentils, chickpeas, and black beans to your meals. Look for 100% whole grain sprouted grain breads, not just brown bread. And remember, every insulin spike adds up over time. The cooking mistake that could cost you. One lesser known contributor to cancer risk is the overheating of cooking oils. When oils are heated beyond their smoke point, that's the temperature at which they begin to break down, they can produce trans fats and other oxidation products. Olive oil, for example, has a smoke point around 350 degrees. It's fantastic raw or lightly sauteed. But if you're frying at high heat, you might be promoting harmful byproducts without realizing it. One animal study published in Nutrients showed that rodents fed high heat fried oils developed more intestinal inflammation and precancerous changes than those fed oils used at lower temperatures. So use high smoke point oils like avocado oil or refined coconut oil for high heat. Keep olive oil for salads, dressings, and low heat cooking. Avoid reusing oil for frying. Each cycle increases oxidative breakdown. I know nobody likes to hear this, but processed meats and high heat grilled meats are well-documented risk factors for colorectal cancer. The World Health Organization classifies processed meats like bacon, sausages, and cold cuts as group one carcinogens, the same category as tobacco and asbestos. Why? These meats often contain nitrates and nitrites, which can form nitrosamines in the body, compounds known to damage DNA and promote cancer growth. Even more concerning is grilling over open flame, charcoal and high 
heat grilling produce polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, and heterocyclic amines, HCAs, which are also DNA damaging compounds. Does this mean you can never eat bacon again? No, but moderation is the key. Limit processed meats to once a week or less. Bake a roast instead of char broiling. Marinate meats before cooking. Some studies show this can reduce HCA formation. Fill most of your plate with vegetables and high fiber foods to offset the risk. This is the part almost no one gets enough of, but it may be the most powerful thing you can do every single day to protect your colon. Fiber, especially insoluble fiber, plays a critical role in cancer prevention. Here's how. Insoluble fiber acts like a brush in your colon, helping sweep away old cells that can become precancerous. It supports healthy bowel movements, reducing the time that toxins stay in touch with the colon lining. It's fermented by gut bacteria into short-chain fatty acids like butyrate, which lower inflammation and promote healthy cell turnover. But here's the problem. The average American gets 10 to 15 grams of fiber per day. We need 30 to 35 grams, ideally, from a mix of soluble and insoluble sources. So how do you get there? Eat more lentils, beans, and legumes. Add chia seeds or flax seeds to your yogurt and smoothies. Choose whole vegetables, especially cruciferous ones like broccoli, kale, and cabbage. Try steel-cut oats or barley as a base for meals and snack on almonds or pumpkin seeds instead of chips. The difference this can make to your colon, your microbiome, biome and your long-term cancer risk is massive. Here's a bonus, the role of intermittent fasting and autophagy. This is one more strategy with promising research behind it. And that's intermittent fasting. Why does fasting matter? Because it activates a process called autophagy, your body's way of cleaning out damaged cells, including those with DNA mutations that could lead to cancer. While human research is still emerging, several animal and early human studies suggest that intermittent fasting may reduce inflammation, improve insulin sensitivity, and possibly reduce cancer risk, including in the colon. You don't need to do anything extreme. Even a simple 12 or 14 hour overnight fast, say stopping food at 7 p.m. and eating again at 9 a.m., can help support your cellular repair. It's not a cure-all, but it's one more tool in the prevention toolkit. Colon cancer can be aggressive, and in many cases, it's silent until late in the game. But what you eat every day can stack the odds in your favor. Here's your prevention checklist. Cut back on added sugar and refined carbs. Avoid overheating oils and ultra-processed foods. Limit grilled and processed meats. Increase your fiber. Aim for 30 plus grams a day to support gut health with whole foods and legumes. Consider gentle intermittent fasting and stay on top of your screenings. I'm Dr. John Chuback. If this video helped you, I encourage you to share it. It might change somebody life. Let me know in the comments what changes you've made or questions you have. And don't forget to subscribe for more real-world, science-based health advice. Stay well and take care of your body. It's the only place you've got to live. See you in the next video.